Andersonian conjugate normal faults can be represented inside a cuboid. In my diagram here, the blue diagonals are indicating fault plane 1 and fault plane 2 and they are at a steep dip with the horizontal plane. In case of Andersonian conjugate normal faults, this angle can be within 60 to 70 degrees. And we have seen in the green board drawings that the intersection between the two conjugate normal faults is a horizontal straight line and that itself is a sigma 2 principal stress axis. We can think of a vertical line which is the sigma 3 principal stress axis. The sigma 1 principal stress axis is along the dip direction of fault plane 1 and if I extend this black line in this direction, I can say that sigma 1 is along the dip direction of plane 2. This is known from the theoretical fact. Imagine someone went to the field and using a clinometer or Brunton measured the attitude of fault plane 1 and he found that the strike is east to west, the dip amount is 70 degree and the dip direction of fault plane 1 is towards geographic north direction. Then I am posing these three questions just like the previous exercise we did on the reverse fault. Plot FP1 and FP2 as great circles in the stereo net. Plot the poles of FP1 and FP2 and then plot the sigma 1, sigma 2 and the sigma 3 principal stress axis. We will do things slowly. Next, the fault plane once strike is east west. Where is east west here? This point is east. I marked by a small circle here. This is west. So, east to west is the strike of the fault plane 1. Next, it has a deep direction towards geographic north. Where is geographic north? This is my geographic north. So, I can write this as the deep direction, this as strike and that as strike. This S and S are different, this is south and this is strike. So, I can put S dash over here. Next, how much is the deep amount? The deep amount given for fault plane 1 is 70 degree. So, what to do? From the deep direction marked on the periphery, I have to move 70 degree inside 70. So, if I join this, ideally this line should not be drawn, but I am drawing for the beginners. The angle covered here is 70 degree. Now, the plane has to be drawn, fault plane 1 has to be drawn as a great circle passing through this point, this point and that point. At this position, I do not see a great circle in the stereo net just below the tracing sheet using which I can draw the great circle. So, therefore, I maintain the center to be fixed, center in the tracing sheet and center in the stereo net, they are kept fixed and I rotate so that this S dash point comes to north and this S dash point comes to south. So, this great circle represents FP1 or the fault plane 1. So, if I rotate it back, this is how it looks like fault plane 1. As per instruction, it is a normal fault, but in the great circle alone, there is no indication whether it is a normal fault or not. It indicates simply a plane and we have an additional information that this represents a fault. East to west is the strike. 
Now I come to the question once again. I am asked to draw FP2 as a grid circle. We are given the FP1 data, but the FP2 data is not given. But we can understand what can be the FP2 data. Being conjugate fault, the strike should be the same. Being conjugate fault or conjugate plane, the deep amount should also be the same, but the deep direction has to be 180 degree opposite. 180 degree opposite to geographic north is the south direction. So, this is the attitude of FP2, which includes strike, dip and dip direction. With these three, we can draw FP2 as a great circle stereographically. So, this is the dip direction of FP2, I can write this is DD of FP1. I have to move 70 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 and plot a point. So, what I have done? This is like going 70 degree inside. This line is not required to draw, but for the beginners I have drawn that this is 70 degree moving inside from periphery towards the center. When I move in this way, the center of the circle in the tracing sheet superposes on the center of the stereo net. They should not be eccentric. And the deep direction was brought over here eventually which was south. Now I have to draw a grid circle passing through this point, this point and that point that grid circle will indicate the FP2. To do that, what I need to do? I need to rotate the tracing sheet. I have rotated the tracing sheet in such a manner that the center in the tracing sheet superposes with the center of the stereo net. The periphery superposes with the periphery of the stereo net, minor variation can be there, but that is ok. I go for the best fit. Some people use a pin and rotate. I personally do not use a pin, I rotate and then just fix things. Now, I have to draw a grid circle as I told you passing through this point, this point and that point. And at this position, I can see this bold grid circle is the one. So, I just follow it with a pencil. Once that is done, I can go back, north matches with north, this is the north in the tracing sheet that matches with the north of the stereo net. Once that is done and center is matched, then east matches with east, west with west, south with south and FP2 has been drawn. So, FP1 and FP2 are the conjugate normal faults, they are steeply dipping 70 degrees, their deep directions are opposite, FP1 dipping towards north, FP2 is dipping towards south, they have the same strike. We are now going to plot the poles of FP1 and FP2. To plot the pole of FP1 in this position itself, I need to move 90 degree inside. That means, the deep direction of FP1 is matched with the geographic north. In this position, I move 90 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So, this is my, I can write P1. P1 is the pole of FP1 that is being done. Now, I want to plot the pole of FP2. I have to move 90 degree inside 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. I can call it P2. P2 is the pole of 
fault plane 2. So, after this is done, we are left with plotting sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in this case and this one is already done. We are going to plot the principal stress axis sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. Recollect the diagram, we find that sigma 3 is a vertical line in case of conjugate normal faults. So, in this case that vertical line is plotted at the center. This is the plot of sigma 3 principal stress axis in case of Andersonian conjugate normal faults. What is the next question we have? This is being done. Let us try to plot sigma 2. Sigma 2 is the intersection between fault plane 1 and fault plane 2 given by this black line and that is also horizontal. Eventually, we understand that sigma 2 is a strike of fault plane 2 and 1. For example, this black line is parallel to this horizontal line or that horizontal line. Keeping this in mind, we come back to the stereo net and where is the strike of the fault plane 1 and fault plane 2? Strike lines are horizontal lines, so they plot on the periphery. This is one point, this is the other point. And this point will be called as sigma 2 principal stress axis, this is the sigma 2 principal stress axis. So, with this we have finished sigma 3 and sigma 2 plotting. We are now going to target plot of the sigma 1 principal stress axis. We see in this diagram that sigma 1 principal stress axis is along the deep direction of fault plane 1 or other way we can say sigma 1 principal stress axis is along the deep direction of the fault plane 2 and sigma 1 is horizontal. From where we are getting from the Anderson's theory, we are getting which has been deduced theoretically. Sigma 1 is a horizontal line and is along the deep direction of plane 1 and plane 2. Keeping this in mind, we understand that this point is a plot of sigma 1 principal stress axis and that is the plot of also sigma 1 principal stress axis. Notice in this diagram sigma 1 and sigma 2 are horizontal lines, so they must plot on the periphery of the stereo plot and that is what has happened. Sigma 1 and sigma 2 have plotted on the periphery. We also see that as per Andersonian model, sigma 1 axis is perpendicular to sigma 2 axis and sigma 3, they are all perpendicular to each other. So, that means sigma 2 and sigma 1 are also perpendicular to each other. So, this sigma 2 and sigma 1 are also perpendicular to each other. Is it happening in the stereo plot? The answer is yes. The angle between this point and that point is given by this angle which is 90 degree. Same thing over here, this angle is 90 degree. Then you can see this angle is also 90 degree and that angle is also 90 degree. That is obvious because sigma 1 or north south trending line and sigma 2 is an east west trending line. The angle between two horizontal lines, one is north south trending, another is east west trending has to be of course 90 degree angle to each other. What about the angle between sigma 1 and sigma 3? Sigma 3 is a vertical line and sigma 1 is a horizontal line. So, the angle has to be 90 degree. Angle between sigma 3 and sigma 2, again sigma 3 is a vertical line, sigma 2 is a horizontal line. So, the angle has to be naturally 90 degree. So, in this way we understand that 
as per our drawing sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are mutually perpendicular. 